Entering and scheduling tasks. Being able to enter tasks is critical, not only to your project, but to being able to use Project 2016 successfully. The tasks are what will track your project progress from start to finish. There are a few ways that you can create and enter tasks. You can enter task names in the Gantt chart view. You can enter task names in the task information dialog box. Or you can import tasks from Excel or Outlook. Let's start with the simplest. Gantt chart view is the default view in Project 2016. This means whenever you open Project, it opens in Gantt chart view. To enter a task in this view, you can simply start. For our project example in this course, we are simply going to use the creation of this course as our project. In the Gantt chart view, we are going to enter Create Outline as our first task. We are going to add it in the task name column as you can see here. All you have to do to enter a task is click in the first available cell in the task name column, then type in the name of the task. Now we can enter other information about this task such as the duration, start and finish, predecessors and resource names. We'll cover all this as the course goes on. For now, we've just entered create outline. Once you've finished entering the task name, you can enter other tasks if you want. Use the down arrow on your keyboard to move down to the next task name cell or just click on another cell. Repeat these steps until you've entered all the task names, as we'll do now. If you need to display more columns to add more information, simply go to Add New Column. This is on the right here. Then select the column name to display from the field list. If you do not see a column called Add New Column, right click in any of the column headings and select Insert Column. There are several ways to enter tasks into Project 2016, including using the Task Information dialog box. To create tasks using the Task Information dialog box, simply double click a blank cell in the Task Name column. Enter a name in the Name field, then click OK. The task now appears in the empty box that you double clicked on. Use the arrows to navigate to the next cell and repeat these steps to add more tasks using this method. You can also import tasks from Outlook. This is a handy feature. Sometimes you have so many tasks in Outlook that they can turn into a project of their own. When this happens, you can use Project 2016 to manage your Outlook tasks by importing them into Project. You'll then have all the benefits of project management software instantly at your fingertips. You can also insert tasks from Outlook into a project you've already created in Project 2016 if the Outlook tasks are part of the project. To import tasks from Outlook, in Project 2016, either open the project or create a new project. Next, go to the Task tab. Click the Task button drop down menu here in the Insert group, and then click on Import Outlook Tasks. You will then see the Import Outlook Tasks dialog box. Select the options for the task that you are going to import. You can also click Select All to import all tasks. Click OK when you are finished. An effort-driven task means that it is a task where effort drives it to completion. If you adjust resources, or people or things used to accomplish a task, the duration of your task might change, but the hours of effort or work will stay the same. Whenever you add or delete a resource on an effort-driven task, the work is divided equally among those resources. Later in this course, we are going to learn all about resources, so do not worry about knowing anything about them now. The definition we gave you will suffice for the time being to help you understand effort-driven tasks. That said, this is how an effort-driven task works. 
Let's say that you have a task set up that will take two days. Two days is its duration. You have one resource assigned to the task working four hours a day. It will take eight hours to complete the work, or two four-hour days. If you add another resource to this effort-driven task, it will only take half the time because the work will be split between them. Effort-driven can simply mean that effort drives a task to completion. The more resources that put in the effort, the less time the task will take. As we said, all tasks are effort-driven by default. You can change a task so it is not effort-driven or make it effort-driven again by double-clicking a task in the task name column to open the task information dialog box. Click on the advanced tab. Either check or uncheck the effort-driven box. Notice that the effort-driven box will be greyed out for manually scheduled tasks. With every task that you create, you can also add notes about the task. You can use the note area to write about changes in timing, to list changes in vendor information, or any other information or changes relevant to the task. To enter task notes, double-click on a task in the task name column. Select the Notes tab in the Task Information dialog box. The task name will appear in the Name field here. You can then write your notes here in the Text field. Project also gives you the ability to format your notes. You can left align, center align, right align. Also, you can format text as a bulleted list or insert an object. When you are finished, click OK to save your note. Tasks that you enter into project will obviously take place at a certain time. A task could take place upon completion of another task, or it could take place at a certain date with a specified duration. In project, you can manually schedule tasks. When you manually schedule tasks, you can enter the task duration and the date. That said, you won't have to enter task duration and dates right away. You can enter these later. When you do enter the duration and dates, Project will fix the schedule for the task. It won't move the task unless you do it manually. However, you can also have tasks scheduled to start automatically, such as when another task reaches completion. If you choose Auto Schedule, Project 2016 will figure out the task schedule for you based on the start and finish date for the task, dependencies, calendars, and resource scheduling. As we progress through this course, you'll learn the benefit of tasks that start automatically. For now though, let's learn how to manually schedule tasks, as well as to set them and start automatically. To set the scheduling for a task, right click on the task in the task name column. Then choose manually schedule or auto schedule. If you choose manually schedule, you'll see that the manually schedule button under the task tab is selected. You'll also see that it's a manually scheduled task by looking in the task mode column here. It will have the light blue pin icon here. If you choose auto schedule, you'll see the auto schedule icon in the task mode column to let you know that it's an automatically scheduled task. We'll learn more about scheduling tasks later in this course. For now, it's important to learn how to choose either manual or automatically scheduled tasks. Sometimes, a scheduled task will start, and you'll find that you need to put it on hold while you take care of another issue or complete another task. Or maybe you realise that there will be a delay in the task when you create it, so you'll need to structure it so that it takes a break and resumes later. You can easily remedy either of those scenarios in project by simply splitting a task. When you split a task, you create a break in it with no activity occurring for the task during the break. You can create as many splits in the task as you want. To split a task, click on the task in the task name column. Then go to the task tab. Click on the split task button in the schedule group, which is this button here. A box appears in the entry bar that guides you as you split a task. Let's say we want to split this task here. First, let's enter a duration for this task. Now, click on the split task button again. Then click on the Gantt bar here where you want the split to occur. The blue bar here will split in two. 
Drag until the second blue bar shows the date where you want the second task to begin again. When you release the mouse, your task is split.